welcome to another installment of Metallic Reviews, the show where I take an honest look at the harder, heavier side of music and give it an honest rating. Today, we're going to be diving back into the depths of prog metal to examine an album by a band that have been around for a fair minute, honestly. <laughs> they've, they've been around for a while. They've bounced from label to label, been with quite a few, and by all accounts, they're a complete mismatch of genres. Yet, this is my first exposure to them. I had never heard of this band until looking up albums to review towards the end of this year. It's always interesting to experience a new band for the first time, so let's not waste any more time, and we're going to be diving into San Francisco's Hammers of Misfortune and their new album, Overtaker, out December 2nd, independently. Yeah, we're going to be supporting the indies around here a little bit this week. It's the band's first album in six years, and there's... There's a fair bit to unpack here, so let's jump right in. Now, first of all, from the get-go, the tonality, the overall style of the album is... I can only use one word to describe it, and that word is chaotic. It is completely, completely chaotic. It's weird, it's erratic, and it's completely lacking in anything that I would expect out of an album that professes to be anywhere near the prog metal world. Ironically enough, that's actually kind of something I appreciate about the album. I'm just as surprised as you are. It's kind of like what would happen if current era Opeth made an album with like deconstruction era Devin Townsend project with a little bit of grindcore and thrash influence and that overall aggression tossed in. That's the best way I can think of to describe this record. It's limitless in its soup of crazed musicianship. It vibrates back and forth like so many flies on a hot summer's day. In short, there's no area where this album won't explore, but there's still like this invisible boundary somewhere that they just do not go outside. It's artsy, but it's reined in artsy in a way. There's... There's a few bits of metal cred on here as well. Guitarist and founding member John Cobbett did live work for Gwar, and drummer Blake Anderson was most recently with Prague Thrasher's Vector. Now, this is his first work with Hammers of Misfortune, and he's all over the place. Keeps with the theme of this album, really. The entire piece is basically one gigantic roll with pieces of thrash influence here, grind influence there, and an all-encompassing sense of dread mixed with wonder. As I said before, it's weird. Oddly enough, I'm kind of here for it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm kind of here for it. It's, 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 it's pretty solid. It's not going to be put on a pedestal with the great drumming performances in metal history, but it does show Anderson's technical prowess and his chops very, very well. Now, this is an album that does come close to completely imploding on itself at multiple times, yet they're able to successfully bring themselves back and can kind of continue on this journey. The path on this album, folks, is coated in a thick layer of thorns, brush and rocks, both big and small, and it's insanely winding with twists and turns happening at the drop of a hat. Now, that being said, the group is able to somehow guide the listener properly to their destination. Since albums in and of themselves are journeys, this has to be considered a strenuous hike. It's one that's kind of worth taking, but perhaps only once or twice for the inexperienced. The tougher, more hardened, progressive hikers can probably stand one or two more listens. Now, as true as everything I've said is, there are still some issues with the album. To start with, it's repetitive, and it grates by the end of the album. This is a prog metal piece that leans heavily into the idea that every prog song in the world needs to sound exactly the same with only minute differences. This is basically the equivalent of a shampoo bottle's instructions, lather, rinse, repeat. It, it, it could have just skipped the track breaks and been 44 minutes of straight thrash grind influenced prog. Honestly, that, that would have been a little bit better than what we got. Another problem I have here lies in the mix itself. It buries certain parts, and if those parts were more at the forefront, I feel like it would be more essential to a song's success. Now, I speak mainly of the vocals here. Lead singer Jamie Myers does get buried in some areas, especially on the track Ghost Hearts. She also does two tracks with guest vocalist Mike Scalzi, who was a former member of the band, 
and they don't exactly play on equal ground, if you catch my drift. He can overpower her at points. She can come back and kind of put him in the back of the mix at some points. It just sounds off. The use of some vocal effects and overdubbing is apparent here, yet it's not enough to save the overall mix from sounding muddled and somewhat contrite. But all in all, I can safely say this isn't the best or worst thing I've ever heard. It lies somewhere squarely in the middle. Unfortunately, in a year like 2022, where metal has had so many shiny new toys to play with, this one might just get tossed in the metaphorical corner on Christmas morning. Now, that tossing isn't without justification, mind you. This album, again, it's weird, it's erratic, it's crazy, it's definitely not for everybody, but it does work on a few levels. It's a shame that there are a few more levels where it doesn't. So in light of all that, I'm giving it a 3.5 out of 5. Thanks so much for watching. Click like and do not forget to subscribe for more Metallic reviews. Next time, we are going to be experiencing our final review of the year. And this one is sure to be a bit of a doozy. That's right, we're heading back into black metal territory as we're going to be checking out Woods of Desolation's new album, The Falling Tide. I hope you'll join me. You've been watching Metallic Reviews, where I give honest ratings to honest music. I will see you all next time.